Hey, there's no point in letting a good coffee table base go to waste, so we're going to build a top for this thing. Keeping with my nautical themed tabletops, this is kind of what I have planned for the top, but this one, it's a, yeah, you guessed it, it's a septopus. I uh, counted the legs just a second ago and realized, oh, I've missed one. So I've roughed out where the legs should be on the tabletop, and now I'm just going to freehand the the design I've got here. Now, last time I didn't do this, but this time I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in reverse because when you put it down, you end up flipping it over. So it's going to be basically like this, I guess. So that is what I shall draw. It seems roughly correct. And we have space all around, just barely here, but we have space all around to put our our barrier. So that seems pretty decent. Now I've got to transfer this design in reverse. I think I'm just going to trace this through the back, put it on a little bit of a light table, and then uh, it'll give me a better idea of how I'm going to lay this out. Okay, I got it reworked out. I threw an actual little arm. I don't like it. But, I don't know, maybe it's okay. It's hard to fit eight arms. I don't know why they have eight. Jeez, evolution is stupid. So I just cut some strips of extruded polystyrene, you know, this is that uh, insulation stuff for sheathing on your house or whatever. This stuff, good stuff, it's flexible and uh, doesn't, concrete won't stick to it, comes apart real nice and it's lightweight, easy to use. Anyway, I've said enough. We're going to just hot glue this down in the perimeter. Now I'm going with one and a half inch because I think that's all I'm going to need. It's not a very large piece. I have to remember to check the thing is in focus because this thing doesn't autofocus. Pain in the ass. So anyway, I recorded what I did over here, which you actually can't see because it's not in frame either. Okay, let's try this again, all right? So what I did here when nobody was watching you take, so this is my most extreme curve here. So you start with the middle and that's where you're going to bend that curve. If you, if you try and do it at the end, you know, you're going to snap it. You need to do it in the middle. So then uh, you just put a bead of glue around here. I didn't put it all the way around. We're not at that point yet. Just along the curve here. Bent this into shape, laid it down and just wait. And just wait until the glue dries. So uh, once that's dry, it doesn't take very long. You know, it's hot snot, right? It's hot snot. It takes, hardly takes anything to dry. These have a little bit of flex. If you hold this down, you can lift this up, which means you can lift it up and bring it into place. So you can glue along this edge now, which is, I will just do that. So we'll run a bead of glue along there. And I think we can get all the way around. Lift and settle. And wait. Come on. People are getting bored. Come on. Esther. Okay, so this one's going to be a little more difficult because you have to curve it twice and hold it okay and that's it don't buy anything expensive for this please there's absolutely no need for that
this stuff is cheap and you can, you know, if you're just using strips like this, you can get thousands of strips. That's an exaggeration, mind you. Now for these joints here, if you're looking to get a real nice clean surface straight away, taping them is probably a good idea. You will, otherwise you will end up with, you know, a seam there. So let me see. You might get a bit of a divot there. The other thing you can do is to put silicone along there and then just smooth it out. It's not the end of the world because chances are you're going to be grinding it a bit anyway. Now we'll just run a bead of silicone right around the edge. What the? Come on. I cracked the seal on this baby. Why you don't come out? That is not coming out very easily. Good lordy. What's going on with that? Uh, well, if what I'm doing here doesn't look right to you, it's because it's not. I thought there was something weird about that silicone, and I was right. The, the shit did not cure. And it's just a bloody mess. And you can't really leave it on there, because it's, you know, it's not going to cure. So here's the lesson. If your silicone does not smell like acetic acid, like vinegar, don't use it. Yeah, it's just a mess. Uh. And for removal, in case you get into this situation, isopropyl alcohol will do the trick. Yeah, that's a right pain in the arse, I tell ya. All right, so I went and re-siliconed this. I actually cleaned the whole thing off tore off this, tore off the foam, redid it, just started from scratch because that stuff was a mess. Old Never Cure brand silicone. Psst. Hey, you probably noticed that Wonder Boy here completely neglected to tell you anything about how the whole silicone thing works. So Future Man here is going to enlighten you on that process. Here's a little pro tip for you. Put a little bit of wax at your crease before you lay down any silicone. And what that's going to do, well you'll see in a bit, but what that's going to do is it'll allow it to release off the board and off of the foam much easier. So you just want to polish it up a bit. And then you need 100% pure silicone. Lay down a bead. Oh, no. Sniff test first. Mmm, pickles. No problem. Oh, you know, these, these caps are like a... They don't work. All right, lay down a bead. There we go. Oh, geez, that's, that's, a little, that's a little excessive there. You want something more like that. Okay. Now, I find that... Oh, what did I do with that? Fuck. As I was saying, I find that using the ass end of Sharpie is really, like a fat Sharpie is really good for this. And if you can get the Sharpie the same color as your silicone, it doesn't matter. So all you're gonna do here is just run this along the edge and you're gonna notice it's gonna split top and bottom. All right, so when you run your Sharpie across the edge there... Hey, it's Mr. Compressor! How you doing, Compressor? Doesn't everybody talk to their tools? So you can see that there's a, a, a sharp white line right along the base. There'll also be kind of a, the same kind of thing along the, the foam side, but you can't really see it. But it, there's a big buildup here, and it's actually okay to have quite a bit of buildup, and that's why the wax is there. Because once this dries, that will simply just peel right off, and you'll be left with a nice, clean uh, line at the, at the interface between the two materials there. And that's handy. <laughs> So if you use a, the thinner side of your Sharpie, what'll happen is you'll get a sharper line along the interface. And if you use it like a really big fat rounded piece of something, you'll get a, a more 
gentle curve and all that's doing is creating the profile for the edge of your work whatever it's a counter or whatever it's going to be so that's what this is good for and bonus you can write with the other end so we're in fine shape for pouring now 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 the next thing i need is rocks and plenty of them so uh to that end taking a vacation gonna do some prospecting I tried pretty hard to find some rocks on vacation this year, but I was not successful. I did, however, manage to pick up 30 pounds of shells. I also found this, a pair of mermaid knuckle busters. Don't mess with mermaids. <sighs> They're nasty. This is what I came up with for the pick and placement of all the shells. Uh, I got these little scallopy shells that I uh, thought might, once you grind them down, it might make a little sucker looking thing. I'm not sure if that's going to work out, but uh, actually I'm not sure any of this is going to work out. It seems like it's okay now, um, but you know, once you put everything together, is it really going to show up and grind it down? How much of the stuff is going to show through? Blah, blah, blah. Bitch and complain. So uh, right now, okay, so the next step, if you're going to do this, is to actually glue each one of these little pieces down in place with a little hot snot and that will uh, keep everything in place as you pour the cement. Alright, now that everything is well attached to the melamine we can uh, mix up some concrete and just fill it in. Okay, what I'm using here is the Sacrete 5000. That. Plus, it's the high strength stuff. It's it's good for the concrete countertops, and you can make it as thin as one and a half inches, I guess, and it still has strength to it. So I'm not too worried. This is a small piece. Fucking heavy. Man. So since I always end up making not enough, I'll just add a little bit more because you know stupidity. And if you are going to do any amount of concrete work, even just a few pieces, get one of these buckets. They're cheap and they're damn handy. They're, you'll find lots of uses for them. You also need a shovel. And some water. There are instructions on the bag on how much water to use for an entire bag, and that's probably good if you're going to use an entire bag. Otherwise, you're just going to have to do it by, by feel. Yeah, so that seems pretty good. It, it's flaky, but you can you could probably go a little wetter. But you know, I like to err on the dry side. But I think that's good. So now we just need to load it into the form. Nothing complicated about that. All right, you're gonna need to vibrate it, and I, my weapon of choice here is an old uh, vibration sander. You're gonna notice this thing's gonna start to pack down. So a good way of doing this is getting underneath and vibrating from the bottom. So as you vibrate, what's gonna happen is water's gonna come to the surface and it's gonna start to bubble. That That's air that's coming out, and you really need to get Oh, as much of that as you can out and it's also settling and that you'll need to fill in more as you know it drops down a smarter person would have built a jig for this to just set it in there and have it vibrate it's hard work to keep that thing vibrating anyway i'm gonna add a little more now so you can see even though this seems pretty dry there's actually quite a bit of moisture in it so don't worry too much about that and in fact, if it's too wet, you'll see that a lot of a lot of water will come to the top. And I don't think that's good, but I, I don't really know what I'm doing. Just know what works for me.
Okay, one thing I forgot to do was check for level, and I can see that as it's uh, as it's getting vibrated down, there's a low side and a high side, so I'm going to have to shim this side up a bit, this side up a bit, this side up a bit in order to make things level. Make sure you do that before you start this, makes it a little easier. Now, ideally, you want to vibrate this until there are no more bubbles coming to the surface. Either that or all the fillings in your head have fallen out. Uh, it takes a long time, but the more time you put into it, the better. So you want to have the rate of bubble formation to be almost zero. Like, you're still always going to have a few little ones coming up, but try and get it down to nothing. Uh, the reason for that is every bubble that doesn't come up forms a little cavity that may need to be filled uh, later when you're finishing the product. Now all we're going to do is let it cure and that's going to take four or five days maybe. Uh, if you can cover this with a piece of plastic or something that's a good idea. It keeps the moisture level kind of consistent in there as it cures and then it's just a waiting game. All right whatever lie I told you about how long to let this thing cure, ignore that. This has been sitting here for nine days now and I feel like it's ready. I probably could have cracked it open at seven, but uh, you know, you just don't want to do it too early. So uh, we're going to have a go at this and see what we've got. Okay, so the edge looks quite nice, and it does look thoroughly cured, so I'm pretty happy about that. Now, getting it up can be a little bit difficult. You do have to get under there and then try and pry it up. Without damaging it, of course. If you can just find one spot that's uh, amenable to this, you can usually just lift it out. There we go. I got a little purchase there. I'll we'll try and ease it off the board here. There we go. All right. Okay. So. Yeah, we shall see. It does look like my little uh, suction cup thingies there did do what they were supposed to. Um, but now I'm thinking, is that really what I wanted? Because <laughs> I've got holes in the damn thing. Might have to fill those with epoxy or something. Hmm. Didn't think about that. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Okay, so yeah. Otherwise, it looks it looks about right. It's got quite a nice finish on it. Even just uh, un, un, unpolished. So yeah, this should be interesting. Next step is to grind this down with a, uh, let me see what I got here. So we're going to, we're going to take this on a grinder and this is like a diamond embedded piece of steel. And uh, we're just going to grind uh, the surface off until we get to the depth that, you know, we start to reveal our impression there. So well, it'll be next. As much as I hate to do this, we're going to have to part one and part two of this mess. In part two, I'm going to grind off the top surface, then we'll polish it up a bit, densify it, and then polish it up even higher. So if you're interested in how that all works out, please come back. I am too, because I haven't seen it either. If you skip to the end to just find out how this thing turned out, then I'm sure you've got your gitch in a nut by now. But don't worry, I'll be back to give you some closure. So grab yourself a 2-4 and kick back for a while. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>